Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Youth Man. Today, I've got another exciting home theater of the month. But before we get into the video, if you're into home theater, audio and video, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell notification so that you'll be notified when the next video drops. All right guys, today I had the opportunity to visit Frank and Alyssa's beautiful home, as well as their incredible home theater. And so I'm excited to share with you all about it. It's a 7.2.4 Dolby Atmos Klipsch and SVS home theater. Now this thing is big. It's actually about twice as big as my home theater. So man, I'm super excited to share with you. Now before we get into the details of their home theater, I just want to share with you that Frank and Alyssa both together built their home theater. Now both of them are just as passionate about home theater and they're both are incredibly handy. And so they built everything from the risers to the electrical to building the screen, everything pretty much in the room, they did themselves. And so as you're looking at this, man, I hope it inspires you to get some friends, to get some family members and say, hey man, let's build an incredible home theater in our home. So enough talking, let's get to the video. The room is 19 feet by 23 feet with 10 foot ceilings. At the front of the room, we have the Klipsch RF7 version 3. They have a 1.75 inch compression driver tweeter and dual 10 inch ceramic woofers. Next to that, we've got the SVS PB16 Ultra. The center channel is a Klipsch RC64 version 3 which has four six and a quarter inch drivers, as well as a 1.75 inch compression driver tweeter. For the side surrounds, we have the Klipsch RP502S. And then up in the very back, we have a pair of Klipsch RP500SA height speakers. At the back of the room, we have a SVS PB4000 subwoofer. The media rack consists of an AC Infinity fan that keeps the Marantz SR8012 receiver cool. Below that, we have some Control 4, a Panamax line conditioner, Samsung Blu-ray player, Xbox 360, as well as an Emotiva XPR three-channel differential amplifier. At the back of the room, we've got this really cool bar that allows you to eat snacks or sit down and have a meal before movie time. To help with the acoustics in the room, on the side walls, we have a four foot by eight foot acoustic panel. Then also right behind the front speakers, we've got more acoustic panels there as well. The 158 inch image is projected by a Sony 4K projector. All right guys, so right outside of the home theater, We've got the rear of the component rack system. And so here you can see we've got all kinds of cables that are nice and tidy. And so this is the way you want it to look. You don't want a big rat's nest. So Frank's done a great job at organizing that. And it gives him great access to when he has to change out any components, upgrade his receiver. And so that just makes it really, really convenient. And then just to conceal it, got a nice cool door right there. All right, guys, this theater is incredible and I want to share with you a couple of things before we even kind of did any demos in the room uh, Frank had just bought the PB 4000 subwoofer he had already had the PB 16 picked up a second one just like literally the day before I was to arrive and he asked me if I could bring my laptop and REW and uh, the calibration microphone which is a UMIK-1 and so when I got there, we introduced ourselves, hung out for a little while, and before we did any demos, uh, I basically just ran some frequency sweeps in his room, and we found that with one subwoofer, the PB16, it had this nasty uh, null. And so uh, actually it had several kind of just these deep nulls, which is a lack of bass. And then I showed him, uh, we turned on the second subwoofer, which was the PB4000. We ran tests just by itself. It was a little better, but it was still kind of wonky. And so then we put both of them on and I ran REW 
and we got a much, much better frequency response. Now, I shared with you in a previous video of how having multiple subwoofers in your home can actually benefit greatly, especially in the area of frequency response. It can actually fix a lot of times when you've got these nulls or this area of lack of bass. And so I'll link to that video right up here. If you haven't checked that out, definitely look at that because having multiple subs can definitely have lots and lots of benefits, especially in the area of fixing those problematic areas in your room. Now, once we calibrated everything and got the levels matched and adjusted his crossovers a little bit, we cranked it up and we had a blast. We're looking at a 158 inch screen in 4K. It was gorgeous and of course massive. Now again, his room is about twice as big as my room, but man, that screen was just beautiful. Now not only was the picture quality and the image excellent, the sound was incredible. We watched several demos from Mad Max uh, to Godzilla. Of course, I love Godzilla, a lot of LFE in that a lot of bass, some great Atmos sound. And so his setup did amazing with that. The bass was nice and full, definitely could feel it just in your body. You know, your, your body was vibrating. Um, the Atmos speakers, now I didn't mention that in the video, because honestly guys, it's just hard to videotape um, any kind of Atmos speakers, especially when you paint your ceiling black and then you paint the speaker grills black, there's really nothing to show. But Frank does have four in-ceiling uh, C or Klipsch CDT 5800C, uh, same type of speakers that I've got in my theater and they sounded phenomenal. And so man, from the, the comfy couches to the huge screen, to the massive sound that the RF73s and the RC64, it just sounded beautiful. Now he had plenty of power with the Marantz SR8012 powering all of his surrounds and his Atmos channels. And he had the front three just kind of rocking with that Emotiva XPR3, uh, which is a differential amplifier. Just lots and lots of power. And man, it was clean, it was crystal clear and it sounded amazing. Now Frank and Alyssa, they've done a phenomenal job and at the end of this video, I'll be sharing with you some construction photos of them actually building the theater, so definitely stick around for that. But man, it was just a great, great experience. And so my hope with these Home Theater of the Months is that you'll look at it and you'll see something that just kind of inspires you to do something in your home. Now, not everybody has the space or the budget to do a dedicated home theater, but I believe everybody can have a nice home theater, whether it's in your living room, in a bedroom. Um, might be difficult to do it in the bathroom or shower, but some of you guys are crazy enough to maybe try to make that happen. But man, just go after it, guys. If you, if you can't afford brand new speakers, get some used gear. There's some great, great deals in the used market. Um, if it's too expensive to buy a, a screen, build a screen. There's a lot of great information on the internet on how to build your own do-it-yourself screen. Um, man, there's just so many resources out there. Build it over time, have fun with it, use videos like this to get ideas and inspiration from colors to acoustic panels to uh, maybe speakers or amplifiers and setup. I just wanna inspire you guys to uh, just really go after it, man, and have your own home theater that you and your family and your friends can enjoy together. Now, down in the description below, I've included all of the equipment as well as things like color, size of the screen, and so forth, as well as links to those various products. So if you're interested in those, you can check them out down below. Now, if you like these types of videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel because I produce weekly content on home theater, audio, and video. And as always, you guys be blessed, and we'll catch you in the next video.